Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. Today we'll be doing the poem The Patriot which is written by the famous poet whose picture we are seeing over here. His name was Robert Browning. We will also know uh, his year of birth and death. It is 1812 to 1889. Like we have uh, done the Bengal sellers and we know what kind of a poem it is. We will also know what kind of a poem this one is, The Patriot. It is a dramatic monologue. What is a dramatic monologue? A dramatic monologue is a type of a poem where a particular person, mainly the poet, speaks about a situation and it seems that he is speaking to somebody else. He is speaking to a listener who is not speaking anything back. Okay, who is not uttering any word or any sentence, but the speaker himself is going on speaking as if there is a presence of somebody else also. When we are talk, when we when we say it's a soliloquy, it means that a person, it is just a private speech. He is talking to himself. But in case of a dramatic monologue, it seems that he is talking in the presence of somebody else, but that person is not speaking back anything. That is all. Next, we'll move to. The first stanza of the poem. Let's read the first stanza. It was roses, roses all the way with myrtle and myrtle mixed in my path like mad. Over here, we I have written down the meanings for you in red. You can write it down in your copies if you or in, or in your books if you want. Myrtle is a kind of a tree which has a very sweet white and pink flowers. So we can understand that this person, the patriot was being welcomed into the city or into the town by his people. Okay, It is talking about the past. These are past incidents. We have to remember that the first three stanzas of the poem talks about the past. It is already over. The time is over. So we are talking about the past over here. What, what had happened in the past? It was a golden past. This man was entering into his own town or into his own um, homeland. And then what was happening? There were so many people who were greeting him with roses and with myrtle. Okay, they were all uh, showering flowers on him when he was entering his homeland. Mixed in my path like mad. We see now when somebody rejoices, when when a when a leader or a when a when a hero comes, we greet them in various for, various ways. So these all people were waving their hands, as you see in the picture. They were standing on top of the buildings, on the terraces, on the balconies, and waving their hands to welcome this patriot while he was entering. And the house roofs seemed to heave and sway. That means the houses where there isn't it, there was a road and all along the road there were various houses. On the tops of the houses people have gathered and they were and it seemed that the house roofs or the tops of the houses were shaking, were moving. Why it seemed that they were moving? All the people were standing on the roofs and they had their hands raised and they were waving their hands greeting the leader. But it seemed there were so many people on the terrace, there were so many people who were on the roofs of the houses and were waving their hands. It seemed that the house itself was waving. The church spires, what are church spires? You obviously have seen the top part of the char church which is pointed, that part of the church is the spire where you see the cross sign. So from there, there were tall flaming flags from there, flamed such flags. So from top of those church, there were flags golden flaming burning flags okay not burning it had the bright color there were bright colored flags that is why it is said that the, that they flamed such flags they had a year ago on this very day that means what time is this this is just one year after this time when he was being greeted with roses and myrtles and the house roofs were it seemed that the house roofs were shaking as if it would it was also waving as the as it was also greeting the patriot okay that was the situation and when was it just one year from the time he is speaking okay now we will see the summary the speaker here talks about his golden path this is important it's a very beautiful time isn't it when we are greeted in that manner when we when we see that people love us so much we feel very happy so that is a golden past a year ago on the same day on the very particular day he was welcomed heartily okay he was welcomed with, with wholeheartedly by his people okay he was their beloved leader who was he he was their beloved leader 
people welcome him with what with roses and myrtles in the first two lines we have seen the roofs of the houses seems to move as there were people gathered on the roofs waving their hands to welcome him people were waving their hands to welcome their leader okay they were so proud of their leader they were welcoming him the church spires were decorated the church spires i've already told you these are the church spires the top part the pointed part where you often see the flag uh, where you often see the cross sign from there flags were being were were uh, uh, found over there and they were so bright colored flags they were waving their flags for their leaders okay we'll move to the figures of speech in this paragraph in this stanza first one roses what do you think the roses is a metaphor obviously the roses is a metaphor why metaphor as it is used to indicate the love and respect of the people towards their leader they were showing their love and respect with what with the roses so the roses are a symbol of this love and respect the comparison doesn't use like or as we already know that when there is a comparison without Uh, like or as it is a figure of, it is a metaphor and when there is use of like or as to compare between two things it becomes a simile for example if i talk about the beauty of a girl and the roses if i compare them like this as beautiful as a rose then it is a simile because we are using like or as to compare both things but over here we are using roses as a symbol to indicate the love and respect of the people so both of them are compared and without using like or as so it is a metaphor next the house roofs this one is important the house roofs seems to heave and sway obviously the house roofs cannot wave their hands isn't it cannot move but it is pro, it is said over here that the house roofs house roofs were heaving and swaying that is the house roofs were moving were waving them, their hands and then what is this this is a personification what do you mean by personification when we use human qualities to some some uh, dead or inanimate substance for example if i say the table is laughing if i say the chair is crying these table chair and all of that is not a human being but is provided with some qualities of a human being laughing crying are the qualities of a human being or a living substance so when we provide human attributes to some inanimate substance which does not have any life then it is personification over here we are saying that the house roofs were moving which is possible only by living beings so we have used the qualities of a living being for a non living thing for the house roofs that is why it is a personification the roofs of the houses are provided human characteristics of movement to explain that people were gathered on the roofs and were waving their hands to welcome their leader why did he say like this the house roofs were moving if we are given such a question we have to write it is a personification but the houses of the roofs so many people were gathered on the houses of the on the roofs of these houses and it seemed and they were waving their hands to their leader and it seems that the house itself was heaving and swaying it was only moving next the third one myrtle mixed in my path like mat what does this mean see we have already done alliteration in the bangle sellers see what is alliteration alliteration re refers to the repetition of consonant words any consonant letter okay when it repeats in a single line okay in closely connected words maybe in a single line we see 3m okay three words that start with m or three words which start with c that start with c so all this will become alliteration repetition of consonant sounds see myrtle m mixed also m in my m and mad also m four times the the letter m is repeated that is why it is alliteration there is another alliteration over here the church spires flamed see flamed such flags they had so flamed is one word starting with the letter f flags is also f so it is a repetition of consonant sound f that is why it is also alliteration that's all for the first stanza we'll move to the second stanza stanza 2 what is it saying the air broke into a mist with bells in stanza 2 the we see the frenzy we see the extreme happiness in the people because they they are meeting their captain they are meeting their leader they are meeting their patriot so there are bells ringing whenever a famous person comes in there are bells being rung okay there are so many people cheering him the old walls rocked with the crowd so obviously the old walls all the people had gathered on the tops of the houses so the old walls of the buildings seemed to be rocking seems to be moving why because so many people have gathered on the top of the buildings on the balconies 
they were peeping out why because their leader was coming in and they were crying crying means they were screaming they were cheering him you see you know, when we uh, when we see a football match or a cricket match okay we see so many people cheer for the players that they support so these people are also crying and cheering their patriot so then the this poet says or the speaker says that if at that time i had said good folk mere noise repels but give me your sun from yonder skies yonder means from there we, if we say no yonder is my teacup which means there is my teacup yonder means there so if at that point of time the patriot the patriot was loved by his people dearly they were very fond of their patriot so if at that time the patriot had told the people for good folk means the people that please give me your sun from your sky sun is a symbol symbol of what symbol of the most important thing in your life see we cannot survive without the sun isn't it if the sun is not there we will not be able to survive that is why sun here is the symbol of the most important thing in your life maybe for me the most symbols important symbol is my sun okay for you the most important symbol or the most important thing in your life is your parent okay so the most important thing if the patriot had asked for that also they would have readily given it they were so fond of their leader that they could sacrifice anything for him okay they had answered then what would these people answer and afterward what else what do you mean by an afterward what else means first they will be readily giving their most important thing of their lives they will give that away then they would again ask afterwards that means after giving the most important thing from their lives they would ask again what else do you want that means they were ready to sacrifice maybe everything for the patriot let's see this picture shows that there are so many people on the roads there are so many people gathered here see what are they doing they are cheering their leader the leader is coming in maybe this is the road and all the people have gathered in this part of the road they were they were sh showering flowers on them from the from uh, they were showering flowers on him and uh, from the buildings and they were watching him from the buildings they were cheering him waving their hands okay all these people let's see the summary over here the people rejoiced like mad that means they were so happy to see the leader that they were rejoicing cheering okay when they saw their leader bells started ringing the first line in the second stanza the bells were being rung the old walls of the building seemed to rock the old walls were moving as if so many people have gathered on the buildings that the walls of those buildings were rocking and shaking okay and they were why they were doing this they were trying to cheer their patriot people screamed and cheered they were so overwhelmed for him that they could even give away the sun they were ready to give away the sun of their lives or the most important thing of their lives if the leader had asked for it if the leader had asked for the most important thing they could readily give it away to him okay they were so devoted him they they were so much devoted to this person that they could do anything and whatever he asked for they could give him anything okay so we will again see the figures of speech over here see hyperbole this is an important one uh, what do you mean by hyperbole hyperbole means it is a kind of exaggeration we have to remember this word exaggeration means maybe i want to say my daughter that i love you but i say i love you, i will love you for a thousand years what does this mean i will not be able to live as long as 1000 years isn't it a man cannot survive for a 1000 years he will die but still i say my daughter that i will love you for a 1000 years which means that i am exaggerating it i am telling something which is not possible why i am telling that because i want to say that i will love you for n number of years my love will never slacken i will never stop loving you i love you a lot to identify or to signify this or to point it out i will exaggerate so over here hyperbole is an exaggeration what is happening over here they had answered and afterward what else when you have given the most important thing of your life again they would ask what else okay this means that they are exaggerating that they could give anything do anything for him even that thing which is impossible maybe if the patriot had told them that sacrifice your lives for me maybe they could do that also
So when the patriot asked the people if they could give him the sun, they answered, "What else?" It shows that they were ready to give away the most important thing of their lives to lives, and then also they could give him more. First, they will give the most important thing. Then they will ask, "What else? What else do you need? Tell me. We will give that also." Their devotion is exaggerated. Their extreme love and devotion towards this patriot is identified over here through this hyperbole. Okay. Next, we'll move to the second one, symbol. Symbol here is the sun. I told you already, sun is a symbol which identifies the most important thing. Maybe for you, it is uh, a, a video game. Okay, maybe for me, it is my daughter. Maybe for somebody else, it is their parent. Okay, so that most important thing they could give. Okay, next we'll move to stanza three. Let's see what is there. Stanza three. Alack, alack is an expression of sadness. I'm so sorry to say like this. Okay, it was I who leaped at the sun to give it to my give it my loving friends to keep. That is, I was so devoted to these people. Who is saying this? The speaker, the poet. The the speaker is saying, the patriot himself is saying that I loved my people so much that I did not ask them to give their most important thing to me. I did not tell them that you give everything to me. But What did I do? I, being the patriot, I gave everything for them. I sacrificed my whole life for these people. Okay, then not man could do. Not means nothing man could do. Have I left undone? I did everything. Nothing a person could do that I did not do. Which means that I did everything possible for them, for these people who believed in me. And you see my harvest. Harvest means, see, when we grow crops, when we when we put seeds into the soil, what do the farmers expect? The farmers expect that after a few months they will see a number of crops growing. If it is a maybe rice crop, if it is wheat, then these things will grow after a period of time. These seeds will grow into small plants, and there will be these fruits or these uh, these rice, wheat, and barley, everything, whatever they are trying to grow, that will grow. So that period of time when the when we collect the crops from the field when our crops have already grown okay we are, we will go and collect the crops that time is called the harvest season why is it why is the uh, patriot saying about the harvest what i reap this very day now a year is run so he has done huge number of things for his people now it is the time to see what effect or to what effect he has done all this like a farmer he spends a huge number of months to to reap the seeds water the seeds put uh, various um, substances so that the crops grow well isn't it fertilizers and all that they spend so much time in taking care of the crops to to take care of their lands and then what will happen then after a few months their crops will grow that is the time to see that what effect this has brought okay how much work the farmers have done what to what effect how much crops have grown this is the time to see that now one year has crossed i have performed the patriot is saying i have performed a huge number of things i have done a lot of things for my own people and now it is the time to see that what is the result of everything what i have got from here let's see here see there is a line leaped at the sun i will tell you a story over here leaped at the sun this has a reference to a greek mythological story okay it is a reference to the greek mythological story what is the story here is a character icarus who is the son of the master craftsman daedalus okay these are the two characters what did what did these two people do This Daedalus was a master craftsman. He was capable of making very good quality things. Okay, what happened? These two people, that is Daedalus and Icarus, were imprisoned in the Crete island. Okay, they were imprisoned in the Crete island, and they wanted to escape from there. They had planned to escape from there. So the father he collected a number of feathers, and he he melt he used wax. to stitch those to wax them together okay he collected the feathers of the birds and he used wax to stick them together now after he has stuck them together they have become like the wings of the fly wings of the uh, the birds okay 
so he made those wings he made two pairs of wings one for his son one for himself now what did they decide to do they would wear the wings and fly away from the crete island okay they decided to wear the wings and fly away but these wings the feathers of these wings were attached with what with wax isn't it so if the if any of these two people the son or the father went very close to the sun then what would happen by the heat of the sun the wax will melt and they will fall down and die so dadalus told icarus not to go very close to the sun then by the heat their wax will melt and they will fall and die but icarus was very ambitious he did not listen never listened and his wings that was made using wax melted so he went very close to the sun and therefore his wax melted and he fell down and died okay this is the reference over here now this is the pictures we see that uh, this these are the feathers this is the feather these two feathers were made with what with uh, these two wing this wing was made with small small feathers that was waxed together okay and they were made into wings now this man icarus could not stop being ambitious he went very close he could fly men normally cannot fly isn't it so as he could fly he felt i will fly and fly and fly and go near the sun and then what happened he fell down and he died because his wax melted let's see the summary of this part the patriot says that he did not surrender his people or put their lives at risk he did not surrender his people neither did he ask for their most important things in their lives but he risked everything of himself risk of leaping at the sun for his loving friends he leaped at the sun like he cares so okay for his loving friends he did everything that was possible to do for them but now after a year has passed it is time to see the result it is the time of the harvest to see the harvest it is time to see what he could grow in the hearts of the beloved people for whom he risked his own life he had risked his own life he did everything possible now it is the time one year has passed it is the time to see he is again returning to his town and it is time to see what he what is the result of doing all this for his common people now figure of speech the last part for today figure of speech verse metaphor you see my harvest here the word harvest this is the metaphor why is it a metaphor because it metaphorically identifies the result the patriot's deeds what the patriot has done and to what consequences what will happen what what is the crop that he has been able to grow what is the quality of the crop or what is the amount of feelings that he has that the, that the common people feels for the patriot now it is the time to see this so this does not use like or as direct comparison no using like or as so it is a metaphor next the last one for today satire and irony it is a satire it is an irony what what do you mean by an irony irony means uh, for example i felt that i have studied a lot and then i i will obviously score 100 out of 100 in mathematics and then during the exam i gave the paper i sat for the paper and then when i when the result came i found that i have got 30 out of 100 that means i failed so that is an irony i thought something and something else happened so what happens over here he feels that he he has done a lot for his people and the harvest obviously the 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 result would be good because he has done a very hard job for his common people but ultimately what happens we will see in the next part of the poem in the next three stanzas which is the present time okay the past is over first three stanzas were the past moments and now after one year it breaks his heart and leaves his, him devastated he will see that it is it it leaves him whatever he will see in the next three stanzas we will learn about that and we, he will be able to understand that his his heart has totally broken okay whatever he sees will break his heart he never expected such a drastic change so there will be a drastic change in the next three stanzas in the first three stanzas everybody was blessing him was cheering him was showering flowers on him and in the next three stanzas it was a complete drastic change okay it's a contrasting imagery with the next three stanzas the first three stanzas is a direct contrast to the next three stanzas okay so that's all for today in the next class we will do the next three stanzas and also the figure of speech present in those stanzas okay i hope you have liked my video if you have liked it please subscribe comment and like like it thank you